My parents were both born in the Czech Republic back then and they were fugitives. They went to Austria to experience the Golden West and I was actually born in Austria. So my only encounter with the Czech Republic was I spent most of my holidays there. Unfortunately, I wasn't raised bilingually, so I only learned phonetic Czech, I learned the Czech language phonetically and therefore I was somewhat limited. I knew I wanted to play a musical instrument and the choice was guitar for some reason. And back then uh, I went to a music school and there was only classical guitar available. So that's the reason why I started learning classical guitar. Later on I was way more interested in popular music, stuff they played on the radio and also jazz because on the Austrian radio back then they played jazz so I was exposed to some of it and I remember somebody gave me a Joe Pass record and I was very fascinated by that and that was probably the reason when I wanted to play jazz. My influences were a lot of people I remember I was listening to Queen, Brian May, I was listening to Deep Purple I was listening to Iron Maiden, I was also listening to Dire Straits and Mark Knopfler with his right hand technique without using the pick, I could really relate to his playing. And later on I discovered Mike Stern, Schofield, Metheny, John Abercrombie, Bill Frizzell, the usual suspects, <clears throat> later Alan Holdsworth, Frank Zappa, I also had a little rock face where I liked listening to Paul Gilbert and Nuno Bettencourt, Steve Vai. Um, then I discovered Ben Monder, who is, in my opinion, still one of the peaks in the guitar world. Mick Goodrick, many, many more. I decided to move to the US, I believe, in 2003 and that was a time when I felt I was ready for a change, I was ready for a challenge and so I, I thought, okay, the United States, I have to go to a music, musical capital which would be either New York or LA, I know Nashville is also there. So New York was just simply too cold, uh, Nashville, I couldn't relate so much to Nashville, but that's a prejudice because I've never been to Nashville. But I remember I spent time in LA before and I really liked it and that's where I, that's why I decided let's give LA a shot. So I went there and gave it a shot and 10 years later I'm still here. My first gig in LA, well, that was either at a singer-songwriter incident with my wife Sumitra, and then I played at Catalina's with an Austrian drummer in a trio setting, and yeah, I think it was at Catalina's. And my first gig with my music was at the Baked Potato with Terry Bozio and Doug Lunn. My first two years in the US, well, as I said before, I was ready for a change and I received exactly what I asked for. It was a big change. Um, it took me a while to connect to people. I didn't know anyone here. Um, I, I just went out to the baked potato, made friends. I knew Bozio from before, so I asked him if he wanted to play and he said yes, so that's, that's how we got the gig at the potato. Uh, I think when you move to a new city, it's always difficult. Nobody's waiting for you. <laughs> Nobody called you, hey, come to the new city. Maybe in some cases, but not in mine. And it's rather lonely. I would describe it as lonely. But that changes over time. You just have to give it a little time. 
my very first musical collaborators were friends from school, like probably in, like everybody else who's starting out to make music, you just ask somebody or you know that, oh, in, in that one class there is the drummer or whatever. So, so we formed a little band and did gigs. I remember I was maybe 13 or 14, small gigs. And I don't think I need to mention their names now because they're not doing music anymore. I had a variety of musical collaborations in LA so far. Obviously my trio with Terry Bozio and Doug Lunn, later on uh, Bozio and Jimmy Johnson on bass. Then I played in Virgil Donati's band for a while. I played with Planet X, also with Virgil Donati. I played I'm still playing with Eddie Jobson, UK or UKZ, that was the original project, but then it became the UK reunion with John Wetton, Eddie Jobson and different drummers, either Marco Miniman, Bozio, Virgil Donati, Gary Husband on drums for one tour in Europe. Then I played with a couple of people at the Baked Potato, like Scott Kinsey, the Scott Kinsey group, also different lineups, JK Kleutgens, I remember. For a live show, it depends. Uh, either I already have the band and then we just want to play gigs, but if I put together a new band, I'm just looking for people who are really like they're playing. And if they can read music, it's a big advantage. It's not a must, but it just makes things easier. And I'm just looking for personalities and somebody who can relate to my music. That would be a good thing if they actually like my music or at least can somewhat relate to it. And for records, um, it's rather like uh, I'm already playing with these people and we decide to record something. Best. It's always hard to pick the best. Um, I do remember there was one gig at the Potato with Bozio and Jimmy Johnson where I felt, wow, everything is playing by itself, it was so easy and I was actually satisfied with my performance or with the overall performance. But there were so many, it's really hard to say. <laughs> I'd rather not answer that question. Well, first of all, the term jazz musician, that's a very vague term because there are so many different kinds of jazz out there. But let's say if we're talking about jazz and we take interaction, improvisation as a fundament of that, then yes, I would agree. Yeah, I guess, yeah, it probably helps. And in terms of training, well, some people do it by themselves, other people go to schools. That's so personal, it's hard to say. In general, being a jazz-related musician, yeah, you need a certain ability, you need to stick it out. Because nowadays you have to do everything yourself, or pretty much everything yourself. Not only you have to play and compose, maybe book gigs, um, finance everything, make your own promo videos, uh, mix your records, anything. Why? Because there is no budget. And why is there no budget? Because people like to share music and don't like to buy it anymore. Yeah, so I guess the term flexibility comes to my mind. You definitely need a lot of flexibility if you want to be a jazz or jazz related musician. I definitely enjoy writing music and playing my music and breathing life into that music through other people. I definitely enjoy their input. So that's a high point, creating something and then performing it, having it performed. Another high point might be you travel to places you otherwise wouldn't travel that easily. Well, and at least I'm doing what I wanted to do. 
not necessarily what my mother wanted me to do, but I'm doing what I want to do. Okay, my Delap guitar is uh, a Delap guitar. <laughs> it's it's a very special guitar in my opinion. It's basically the only guitar that I'm using because I love it so much. It's a headless format. It's a hollow body guitar. It's got great resonance, great sound. So far the best guitar I could find. Uh, the rig changes depending on the situation I'm working in. It might be just my pedal board. I just redesigned my pedal board. Sometimes I just use the XFX. Sometimes I use the pedal board and my laptop for certain loops or synth sounds. So it totally depends on the situation. So right now my pedal board is... I can explain that. It's a Keeley compressor going into an exotic BB preamp, going into a Mr. Crazy Mod tie distortion pedal, going into a Pictronics booster, going into an EWS chorus, then into a Pictronics Ecolution 2 delay, and finally into an Pictronics Infinity Looper. And of course I always have a volume pedal, because I'm addicted to my volume pedal. Techniques, well, right hand, yeah, of course I do alternated picking, sweeping, hybrid picking, left hand, yeah, legato technique. To me, it's more like whatever is needed, and I'm coming up with a mix that works for me. Doesn't mean it works for anyone else, it just works for me. Sometimes it works for me, and if not, then I have to practice. Well, the collaboration with Gary Husband, that was actually Shuvik Dutta's idea, Shuvik Dutta, president of Abstract Logics. He asked me if I wanted to do a duo record with Gary Husband on piano and I instantly said, yes, I would love that because I'm a big fan of Gary's piano playing. I played with him before uh, on that before mentioned UK tour, the band UK. We, we also played in the UK, but the band is called UK. But I clearly remember that I was listening to his CD, The Things You See, where he only did Holtzworth renditions, or, or his own renditions of Holtzworth compositions, and I was just blown away. That's how I became aware of his piano playing, which in my opinion is outstanding piano playing. So then we decided we'll do it, and Gary wrote half of the album, I wrote half of the album, and we met in a studio, in a beautiful studio, Michael Tiemann's studio in North Carolina, and we had three days and worked like mad dogs and came up with an album called Now. And for me, that was it was on one hand a huge challenge, just having piano and guitar. You can't hide, it's, it's, you're basically naked. And another good thing that I really enjoyed is I did not play any distorted guitar tones. I just played clean guitar. <laughs> and the thing that I enjoyed the most was playing with Gary because Gary is just a phenomenal player. When Gary comps you for a solo, it's everything you would ask for and more. And I never, we never had any discussion about voicings, about choices of voicings, about anything. It was just beautiful collaboration and I hope we'll somehow get this thing on the road because it would be worth it. Right now I'm working on my follow-up album, follow album with my Austrian trio, Fat, Fabulous Austrian Trio. All new tunes, we recorded the basic tracks in August, beginning of August, and right now I'm doing some overdubs here and there and choosing takes. And so far, I have a very good feeling. There are some brilliant tracks on that, I believe. Evan Marion on bass, incredible bass player, and Dana Hawkins, incredible drummer. Two youngsters, I think they qualify as youngsters, who will blow you away. So India, be prepared. Thank you. 